does a direct injection system work? What's the difference between port injection and direct injection here? And some of the things that I need to know when I want to upgrade and why I need to upgrade certain parts. So let's start with how does the fuel make it from the tank to the combustion chamber? So we have a low pressure pump and it's called low pressure because the high pressure side can be thousands of PSI, whereas the low pressure side is generally 60 to 72 ish PSI. And we have a pre-filter or pre-screen. This is not your primary filter. This is your primary filter and uh, inside of this cartridge where the pump, quote, low pressure pump goes, there is a filter built inside and if this clogs for some reason, that can create some problems. It goes from the low pressure part of the system into the high pressure system, the high pressure pump. The high pressure pump has an inlet here in which it allows fuel in via this little solenoid, will allow fuel open into the high pressure pump. It will be pushed out through a piston inside, and that piston inside is driven by this camshaft. This camshaft will rotate on these lobes here, and it will be what looks kind of like a lifter, and it will have a roller, and as that camshaft rotates, it will push a piston and push the fuel out into the fuel rail through a high pressure line, and then from the fuel rail into the injector directly, in this case, in this cylinder head, there is a port here, into directly into the combustion chamber, hence the name direct injection. Now, some of the kind of unique things about direct injection. Well, the camshaft does spin at half the speed of the RPM of an engine. However, there's four lobes on here. So let's just divide those four lobes by two. That's two lobes. So that means for every 3000 RPM, this pump is pumped 6,000 times. Now, this is a really small piston inside. So as the RPM increases, right, there is a gap. So it's not like 3,000 RPM, it pumps 3,000 times, 6,000 RPMs, 6,000 times. So because that gap in RPM changes, the efficiency of a high pressure pump gets better as RPM increases. So I want you to keep that in mind. Now, how do we know when we have a problem or we need to upgrade? One of the downsides of a direct injection is there's usually no pressure sensor on the low pressure side because you need to look at it like two separate systems, high pressure side and low pressure side. Since there's only a sensor on the fuel rail here, we can only tell if there's a fuel pressure drop here we can't tell you, we can't tell without doing some type of diagnostic route in the sense of adding a fuel pressure sensor somewhere or a fuel pressure gauge to know that, hey, we're losing pressure here. Unless you know exactly how much, you know, injector duty cycle you should have for the amount of pump that you have, then you can kind of say, okay, you know, there's a good chance there's a problem here. That's just experience. That's, you can't, if we, I take a car that I've never seen the direct injection system on, and I start seeing this maxing out in duty cycle, and I see this losing fuel pressure, I don't really know which is bad and which is not, unless you have experience directly with the platform, because there's no way to tell. Now, let's say we figure out there's not enough fuel going to your high pressure pump. You can either upgrade the actual pump, you can upgrade to if they make an aftermarket assembly, or you can create a return system. Once you've done that, and then you realize the high pressure pump is your next possible limit, obviously replace the high pressure pump with an upgraded one from aftermarket, or in some cases, if you have a certain aftermarket pump, they make camshafts that have an upgraded lobe on them that, will, that increases the size of the lobe, and you can increase your pump output that way. And then, in certain instances, the high pressure line has what's called a restrictor or a built-in restrictive pulse damper. All this is, is a restrictive smaller hole so that while this pump is pumping fuel in because of mechanical pump, you get pulses of fuel. This helps mitigate those pulses so that you get a cleaner, more steady fuel inlet to the injectors in your fuel rail. In some cases, 
there will be a restrictor built into the top of the injector to also help this out. Uh, the downside to one of these versions is that there's a limit to where uh, these injectors can flow at lower pressures. Now, in, in, in also some very more rare cases, the uh, fuel rail can be a restriction. So you can upgrade the fuel system and maybe the holes inside this rail are just not enough to reach the max potential of the system. Alrighty, now that we know that, let's move on to the last part, and that's the injector. And some people really ask, why does this injector have to have such a large flow rate size to make such little horsepower? I mean, a 1000cc port injector can do 600, 700 horsepower on ethanol, right? Uh, why can't this 1000cc direct injector do that? Well, it's called injection window. It's the time that you have in order to spray and still be able to ignite the fuel. Now, in a port injected car, in not direct injected port, the fuel is sprayed into the intake port. Then it comes through past the intake valve into the cylinder, it's mixed, the valve's closed, compresses, ignites, fuel is burned. But in a port injection car, you continue, often continue to spray even after the intake valve is closed. The fuel is built up a little bit behind that valve, and the next time that valve opens, you simply spray the fuel and it goes right on in and then gets burned. If you're not actually putting fuel in the cylinder after the intake valve is closed, you're not putting fuel in when you're trying to ignite the fuel. In the case of direct injection, because you are spraying on the other side of the intake valve, when you turn around and you try to compress and ignite the fuel, if you are spraying for too long, you will simply literally not be able to ignite the fuel and you'll get a misfire, all right? It'll sound like you, and in many cases, many people believe, oh, you've got a bad ignition coil, bad spark plugs, bad spark plug gap, and it'd be none of those things. Uh, another kind of interesting thing with modern computers is a lot of people think something else is broken when it's not. Uh, they'll say, you'll get a code like, just for an example, injector learn limit. This does not mean that the injector is bad. That means that the computer sees that I'm having to add more fuel here, and this is as far as what we consider the acceptable amount. You can literally have a vacuum line off on the manifold right next to that cylinder. It doesn't even have to be right next to that cylinder. The learn limit could say minimum learn limit, meaning it's trying to take you out, which would literally mean it would be on the opposite side. So don't go thinking because you get an injector code, you got a bad injector. That's just some of the things, and that's more to do with modern computers than it is necessarily with just direct injection, but it's pretty commonplace. So the other thing that is difficult for direct injection is RPM. When we start putting more RPM, right? Factory K20C1, 7,000 RPM limit. What happens when we try to go to 8,000 RPM? So in the case of, uh, I'm just gonna pick one injector and I'm not gonna say the size. I'm just gonna say that this one injector can make 550 horsepower at around yeah, 6,900 to 7,000 RPM. But it can only make 520 to 510 at 8,000 RPM on the same fuel. So this is because as this piston moves faster and faster, we can have such a smaller and smaller amount of time that we can use to spray fuel and get that fuel in there, make it mix and help it burn. So when you have direct injection and your injector size, kind of the best way to look at it is, if I want to make double the horsepower, I'm going to need, and I want to add RPM, you need to remove a certain amount from that number. So uh, I kind of want to say about 20, all right, let's see if we do some quick math in my head, take that minus 20%. Um, is a good number. So uh, if we add a thousand RPM and then double the injector size, we can turn around and double our estimated number, but then take 20%. So let's say we make 400 horsepower, all right? 
and we have a 1,000cc injector. We get a 2,000cc injector, all right? But then we add, go from 7,000 to 8,000 RPM, right? We're not gonna make 800, but, but, if we take 20% off that 800, take 160 off, 640, 650, yeah, that can happen, because 20% of 800 is 160, subtract that, that's 640, voila, boom. Dude, now, that's of course, meaning if you have enough, basically enough high pressure pump, that's another. So, one of the unique things that is unique about high pressure pumps is they become more efficient as RPM goes up, because they don't pump a steady state. So uh, that gap, and I don't remember if I said it earlier in the video, but I'll say it again real quick now, uh, that gap in RPM and pumping pace is, is split. So 4,000 RPM, 8,000 pumps per minute. 8,000 RPM, 16,000 pumps per minute. So you can see how when you go up to a bigger piston size and a bigger high pressure pump, at low RPM, you might not get this massive gain, or you might, depending on how big that pump is, and as the RPM increases, that gap just gets wider. That amount of flow just gets bigger and bigger and bigger on what you can possibly output through the high pressure pump. So I'm pretty sure that covers just about everything. And one kind of last unique thing that you run into. So um, camshafts obviously help upgrade when it comes down to the ability to make horsepower. Sure, I'm not getting into all mix and match, what I'm going to tell you, if you already maxed out your injectors, right, and you maxed out your fuel system, there's a good chance that you're not going to make more power by adding a camshaft, springs, retainers. There's a solid chance of that. It really just depends on your total setup. Now, another thing that's kind of unique, dealing with direct injection, port shape is very different very very different from port injection so and when you port these cylinder heads you need to be very careful on the shape that you make the ports so when you turn around and port these you can go you can go too big but uh porting in general you can go too big that's pretty easy for a lot of people they do that too uh but the airspeed matters and the airspeed matters because when the air speeds fast, the fuel mixes better. But if you make this port too big, and you start changing angles the wrong way, the air will come in, you might get all the CFM in the world, but it's gonna come in slower. The fuel's not gonna mix as good. You're gonna just waste fuel off the exhaust, and the car's not gonna make the power that you want it to get. You can put a ported head on a car, on one of these, um, in this case, a K20C1, and make the same or more power at way less boost. And in, in some cases, depending on how it's done, you can make more when you turn up the efficiencies because you're changing the combustion vent in a certain way. So that's a whole lot of nuances to direct injection. And I hope that this video really kind of got your attention. This doesn't pertain to any one vehicle. This pertains to all direct injection vehicles in the gasoline world. And I should go over one last thing in the pocket of the piston. This is more for what you call split injection. Meaning that when the piston, you spray fuel in initially, it's lean. And then when you come back up and you spray fuel again, right before that ignition event, right? That's the burn that fuel in that little pocket that you just sprayed in. That's mostly what this is for. And direct injection being it cools the cylinder better, you get higher compression without uh, knock events or detonation. So I really hope you liked the video. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, just happy new year, happy 2025. And I hope everybody had a great holidays.